Hello everyone, on the show today our guest is Pavel Zhepa. Pavel discusses the problem of publicly accessible storage containers and the secrets they can hold. To start off, he shares two of the most known researches about this issue, one by Sky High and the other by Rapid7. During his own research, he found lots of files with sensitive data, and after spending many hours reviewing his findings, he quickly realized that he wasn't going to be able to manually search for secrets in the terabytes of files that he found. So please join us and continue watching to see the tools Pavel used to find secrets in the cloud and the ones he built to help him. Today we're going to talk about the, um, about my research uh, regarding the publicly available files, which never should be public. Um, and that was that was my uh, actually my beginning uh, with cloud security. So when you when you type in Google cloud security and started to analyze the articles, most of them are related with uh, S3 leaks. So uh, this is absolutely the plug of any cloud storage service. Um, there are so many leaks, and they are from the early beginning of uh, of the service existence. So, in AWS, the simple storage service is uh, has started uh, on 2006. So, for, from 2006 till 2019, you have a lot of leaks because of um, because of the wrongly configured uh, storage service. So I started my so I started digging in, into it, and I found a lot of um, a lot of interesting facts. I produced some of tools, so maybe people would like to um, to try the research by themselves, or um, they they want to evolve the research. I would be uh, it would be my pleasure to to share the research. When I started, uh, when I started uh, interest, uh, getting interested in cloud security, uh, I found uh, I found articles like uh, the UpGuard. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, they, they even on their website they even have uh, the breaches uh, section. So only the blog posts related with uh, with breaches with uh, with leaks. Uh, many of them are related with uh, the leaks of uh, S3 service. So to just give you um, give you an idea of, uh, about how such leak can look like. So here's here's just one example. So in uh, 2017, they they found the researchers from Upgard company. They found the uh, publicly available bucket uh, of AWS S3 service, and this uh, this bucket contain a file, a DB file, uh, with data um, of almost one, al almost two million uh, Chicago voters. So the company which was um, uh, responsible for uh, supporting from the IT side uh, the elections in US, they they put uh, the the backup of DB in the publicly available file. Wow. So data, the personal data of almost two million uh, Chicago citizens were just shared with all the world. Um, so you you may you may agree that's that's a leak. Uh, that's uh, what company don't want to. To do it, of course, the company replied that it was by mistake and uh, fixed the problem. However, once something is in the internet, um, there will uh, there will be there. Yeah, it's hard to to hide it afterwards. Yes. When you start uh, to search even more uh, leaks like that, there is even the uh, repository that is called yet another S3 bucket leak. So if you are uh, if if you want to read more such stories, here are the uh, links uh, of leaks of any any company. Uh, so, some of them like like FedEx, they are you know big international companies, and 
you can you can uh, you can see uh, that there are re this problem refers to many companies, even the bigger players. Uh, also, an uh, interesting fact here uh, is uh, the Buckets uh, Grey Hat Warfare. Do you know this website? No, I don't. Okay, so basically, <laughs> it was made by anonymous guy, <laughs> of course, uh, and uh, you, using it, you can. It's a browser of publicly available files. So, the guy when he finds the the publicly available bucket. He he just plug it to the to the browser so you can search over this this data. So for example, if we are looking for uh, any file containing a word backup, uh, those which are crossed they are not uh, available anymore publicly. So <laughs> uh, they they so the issue is fixed. But yes. those which are not they are still available. So for example. Um, let's, uh, oh, yeah, let's, well, as you can see, it's like, um, Surculum Vitae, uh, of, of some guy. I don't want to, uh, download it, uh, and to share the, the data of, of this guy, but yeah, you can, you can search it. And that's really, if you want to start a security research, probably that's the one of the easiest way, uh, how to make, how yeah. to, uh, find something uh, something sensitive. And um, do you feel like something from the cloud provider's perspective could be done for that kind of site not to um, not to be able to do that, or or is that a oh. functionality that that is supposed to be there and that it's not it's not a it's not well, a vulnerability. It's it's by design. The thing is that. From one side, uh, I totally understand the providers because they are really trying to, to help people. So, uh, uh, for example, in AWS, they implement a lot of such uh, mechanisms. For example, the latest one, uh, when you have the, the bucket, let's say, uh, here, uh, and there's a um, new, totally new mechanism which is called public access settings for this account. So, uh, sorry, you, you don't even have to go to the to the bucket. And generally, you are pu you are putting it that uh, neither of your bucket, uh, of your current bucket, nor your uh, future bucket will be publicly available. Um, the thing is, uh, regarding the providers, uh, I, I think that actually there shouldn't be publicly available buckets because the only justification of, uh, having such one is the static, uh, website. Uh, when you are hosting a static website, yes, you, it is justified to, to make the public access to it. However, that's the, the that's the only if if anyone of, of the audience knows the other use case for for publicly available um, bucket then then please share it mm -hmm. um, so from from one side I see that providers are really trying uh, help people and they are introducing a lot of new mechanisms actually it's like every year something something new appears but on the other hand, I don't see I don't see a a point. What what's the point of, of having such uh, choice? Um, and there are of course some mistakes from the previous year. So in AWS, there was a group called any AWS authenticated user. So it was exactly like the public access. So anyone who who started their, their account could. Yeah access this file but the people who were using this group they really thought that it's uh related uh, with you know their users yeah but that uh, so, that was fixed that's no longer i know that's the the main example we always hear about but that's something that's been fixed on the cloud provider side is that correct um it's hard to, to call it fix okay it's not 
available from the console. So when you go to the uh, access control list, uh, there's no such option uh, to, to, to use uh, this NEIWS um, authenticated user. However, you can still uh, assign it using the programmatic access. Uh, and of course, you have to because uh, the, the, the provider, the Amazon, they have to be compatible uh, with, you know, with the, with the previous uh, version. So if somebody, for example, 2008, they, they put uh, the, the access to, to this group, the, 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 it is still available for any AWS authenticated user, but when you are starting a new, uh, a new bucket, then you will not see the, the such option. Okay, sounds good. Just All to right. make sure, uh, we we talk a lot about AWS and S three, but your your tool and presentation is is valid for any cloud provider, right? It's not specific right. to AWS. Exactly. It's it's just it's just the uh, example, and uh, I guess uh, people uh, people people who are using uh, I don't know the the Azure Blob Storage. They also face the same problems because the problem is about managing the sensitive stuff. But we will go, we will go into this topic in a moment. So, um, so there were a few, there were a few, uh, few. <laughs> there were a lot of, uh, a lot of such leaks. I read a lot about them. So I decided, uh, I tried to find some statistics about it, and. Basically, I found two researchers uh, made how many in percentages uh, buckets are really publicly available. So one one such um, one such research is from Sky High Networks, and they are saying that seven percent of all the S3 buckets um, have unrestricted public access. And the second uh, research are made by guys from uh, Rapid Rapid Seven, and actually their results uh, they found twelve thousand of buckets, and two thousand of them were um, were publicly available. Okay. But if you take a look on the date, it's those both of the researches were made in 2013 so it's quite old uh, i started uh, you know analyzing the problem in 2018 so after five years i thought come on let's 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 see uh, let's make a research and really see how the situation looks like now and i decided to make it <laughs> so uh, before I can um, tell you how how I found my public buckets, I found uh, 25,000 of them, uh, so like twice more than, than Rapid7. Uh, and my results are uh, even worse than, than here. So basically, when you are starting uh, to, to make, uh, when you create the bucket, uh, you can always refer to it using two ways. One way is the name of the bucket and then s3amazonaws.com. And the second one is referring using uh, such form. So here's the, um, uh, here's the region. The region, yeah. And after slash, you are putting the name. But it, Basically, uh, no matter how you are referring to your bucket, uh, you will see the content, of course, if it is publicly listable. And okay. this is my uh, test, test bucket, so no worries that it is, <laughs> that is available. <laughs> so those two type of addresses go to the same destination? Exactly. Okay. So there are only two files, like secret.txt and testdb. And the same you can see here. Uh, however, 
understanding uh, how to refer to this bucket is uh, essential to, to find as many as possible. Okay. So, um, I choose um, actually um, three, three tools. Uh, and the first is uh, from OWASP. Uh, it, wa it wasn't at the beginning, however, now it is, the AMAS. Uh, in my research, I was using sublister, so these are the tools uh, to enumerate subdomains. Because if you take a look uh, on, on it, uh, finding the new bucket is actually uh, enumerating subdomains of S3 Amazon AWS.com, right? So, uh, any, any tools uh, which allows you uh, enumerating the subdomains are the, the tools that can help you in such. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so AMAS has great results and um, I definitely recommend you to try it. If you are using Sublister, then AMAS is better. Uh, another tool is Bucket Stream. So this is also quite quite interesting tool because it looks in the certificate transparency logs. So basically, when you are uh, registering new certificates, HTTPS certificate for your domain, uh, then your domain is in this publicly available certificate transparency logs. Uh, so you can use this pool. Uh, for for finding the subdomains and this tool is actually finding the name of the buckets based on uh, on the s uh, s3 amazon aws.com domain and uh, then it verifying the uh, permissions to this bucket but the best results gave me the wayback machine so I'm pretty sure you know the website archive.org, right? Yeah. yeah. But you can also um, use the, the Wayback Machine from the Metasploit. So here, let me show you the, uh, here's the, the Metasploit. Uh, and there is a module called Enum Wayback. So let me find it. And basically, uh, for, for this module, uh, the only thing you have to type is domain name. And if the Wayback machine uh, indexed any picture, any document uh, in your, uh, in your uh, bucket, then you have the bucket name, and then you can search for, for more documents. Uh, so for example, you can. Um, the, the scenario I can imagine is like uh, you are sharing only one picture from all, all your files and you are thinking that uh, nobody will find the name of the bucket because it's, um, the, the, the name is random. But using the, this Enum Wayback uh, module, uh, show options uh, then you can uh, you you will find no matter how random the name is yeah. so you can you can uh, set a domain as uh, as free dot amazon aws dot com um, and simply run it um, much better result I got when I was referring using the less common way. Uh, it's not very popular to refer to, to bucket using the region, but using it, uh, I found a lot of, really a lot of results. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's, as you can see, I didn't specify the file and those are all the all the files that uh, that uh, are found by the and way back and of course after that you have to search if those uh, if those files are really accessible of course 
the the uh, photo files are not um, are not uh, interesting from the research perspective. So after uh, after getting like really millions of uh, entities, I there there was a li really art of um, uh, art of um, cutting and uh, cutting the links and just pulling the interesting. Uh, files. After that, um, I found uh, yeah. So the question, the problem later was how to scan the, those files. So let's say you found the the publicly available buckets, which is called Jepski, and and so what? There are thousands of files in each bucket. Uh, manually verifying it. It was, it, it's not possible, um, at least for me when, when I have, you know, family and other <laughs> things to do in life. So uh, manual verification doesn't work. So I started from creating the first tool that is called the buckets, uh, bucket scanner. Uh, it's available on uh, GitHub okay. and it gives you um some some options uh, like um, for example you can specify the regular expression against the the file so for example you are only interested in files containing a word backup or any uh, file which is uh, uh, any file of uh, DB type or uh, CQL type then you can do this using the regular expression. Uh, also, you can limit your searches using the maximum and minimum size. So, for example, you are only interested in, in big files. Um, and um, also, the, 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 you can run it again on uh, multiple threads, which is helpful when you are doing a really big scans. Okay. Uh, so, let me let me show you uh, just one example of it, and this is uh, so. Here's here's the help. Mm, yeah, there, there are uh, some examples, and also this tool is quite unique uh, because it verifies if you can upload. Uh, file to a bucket, okay. and also you can specify um, the your AWS keys, your access keys inside of this tool. So when you uh, may, uh, oh, even more, like forty. Um, so at the beginning of the file. Uh, you can uh, specify the the keys. Uh, okay, I don't want to uh, dig more. However, you can specify the your keys in the um, in the in the program, and it is helpful. For example, when you are pen tester and you found keys, uh, some keys you cannot verify what permissions you have. And you want to just just see if uh, if uh, those keys give you access to any of the of the bucket, then you are specifying, and you have to specify the the list of uh, buckets in the uh, input file. So let's say I will create such file, which will be called uh, input txt. Right, so and another bucket which don't exist, like we'll hope that it will, <laughs> it, it doesn't exist. Okay, so now I have those, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, and, okay. So now I have those two buckets in the file called input.txt, input. right? TXT. So uh, let's run uh, the bucket scanner against those 
uh, files. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and uh, for example, in the in the in the bucket Jepski, there's the secret txt file. However, I don't have um, I don't have access to it. Uh, however, there's another file and to which uh, I have the I have access, and then couldn't access this this bucket because this bucket doesn't exist, right? Yeah. You can also uh, make uh, with the W. You can make um, upload test. So during my scan, I found uh, just to give you exact number, I found one thousand three hundred sixty-five buckets, which allows me to write. To write so to I them. I could overwrite absolutely any file. Mm -hmm. So just just imagine, I don't have delete permissions. But I have write permissions, so I can overwrite every file with empty file, mm -hmm. which actually equals removing the file. Okay. So um, the integrity of the data is at risk right now. <laughs> uh, yes. And I see that actually it can be a good source of trolling, because knowing how easy it is, uh, any attacker can put, you know, some malware uh, in, in files, uh, in, in good-looking files. So the researchers are downloading the, the files, hoping that, oh, it's the Facebook DB uh, for, without hashed uh, passwords. So they are downloading it, they are opening it. So my advice is always, uh, if you don't know the source of the file, do it on the sandbox environment. Uh, so yeah, just keep safe. <laughs> just want to interrupt you because there's a comment in the, in the chat by Car Carl Hugo who's saying mm -hmm. uh, you're in enumerating publicly available stuff, so it's not even a, an attack, right? So um, I agree. Yes, te technically. So when you would do this, you don't need to ask for permission. Is that uh, do? What what are the precautions that you take to make sure you don't get into trouble, even if those things are, are publicly available and are misconfigured? First of all, if you want to um, uh, only uh, several services are really uh, AWS services uh, really require you to send um, a message to, to Amazon. Okay. Uh, and those are, for example, the, the EC2, the API gateway. Um, services like that, not simple storage service. Huh. Uh, however, of course, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, refer to the um, to the you know to to the someone else data. However, because of my ethic nature, uh, I always was um, sending an email. Um, to, to the owners, to people who I believe are the owners. Because that's the problem also. Even if you find a, a bucket with a lot of personal data, you don't know who should you contact. So I was sending mails for the, you know, the general mail address. Um, for example, I, I found uh, the, the, a lot of personal data of players uh, of uh, football players in, really? in one one country that it was national league uh, uh, and i sent them li link how i found and what is there and nobody contacted me back so oh. mostly people were not re uh, replying i don't know um i i don't you know i don't want to judge anyone because uh, maybe the right people weren't notified. Okay. Um, but even uh, when you write, that's uh, interesting to me. So do they even, do you go and verify if, um, um, if they correct it after your email or have you noticed anything like that, that they might not reply, but actually correct the situation? Sure. Uh, sure, I, I take a look, uh, just take a look uh, how, how many of them were fixed and uh, some of them were. Okay. Um, 
uh, some some people just just reply me back that thank you and uh, did you find any anything else? <laughs> uh, it's like uh, free fantasy. Free. So Pavel, you're <laughs> like the <laughs> Robin Hood of of secret data. <laughs> yes, and actually awesome. I put um, the I was when the bucket allowed me for uploading a file. Then I created like upload test file. Uh, so I left those people uh, uh, the the message like this that the, this is the upload test. If you see this file uh, in your bucket, then it means that arbitrary user can upload any file to your bucket. And guess what? When I was doing it, I wasn't the first people <laughs> who uh, the first person who is uploading such files. Mm. So uh, quite quite often when you are uh, just uh, uh, scanning the buckets in search of files like poc.txt uh, or test.txt. Usually those are the files of other researchers who also wanted to make make the uh, world a better place. Hmm. Yeah, so um, mm, uh, to summarize my findings, uh, so I found almost 25,000 of all buckets, uh, 5,241 of them uh, give me the public read access, and it mean it uh, it means that I was able to download at least one file from this bucket, because you can you can assign permissions to that the bucket will allow you for uh, listing the content. However, you cannot download even one one file. So, should should such bucket be called publicly available? I don't think so. So, in my for me, uh, the criterion was that at least one file is accessible uh, publicly from this uh, bucket, and uh, 1,365 uh, allow for uh, for storing for free any amount of data. Um, and just to give you an example of how the uh, findings look like, uh, I have to give you using the, the picture because I don't want to, you know, to, to just um, leak, uh, leak any information about the company. That's not the purpose of this, uh, of this talk. So Fair you enough. can see that I only I I was using only one criterion that the file have to has to contain a word backup. So there are a lot of them, and trust me, in many of them there were uh, sensitive information that should never be uh, shared. Okay, but the problem now is okay. I found really millions of those files. Uh, literally millions, and how to verify them. So I thought about the three ways to search. Um, the first is the Mechanical Turk. Have you ever heard about it? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, that's a great service, by the way. And Mechanical Turk, uh, first of all, <laughs> the name of the service came from the uh, Turkey, I think it's uh, like it was uh, the first artificial intelligence machine in uh, 18th century. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it was just pretending to be artificial intelligence. So that was the box with the chess and people could play and they thought they are playing against the machine. But actually the chess master was inside this box and he was playing against those people. Mm -hmm. uh, however, as you can imagine, a lot of people so uh, you know that the power from from the other world here, uh, and basically the mechanical Turk service is actually something similar. Let me show you. Okay. So basically, you can use uh, you can use human beings <laughs> uh, as a service, if I can call it like this. Uh, you can specify any kind of task. Um, and then you are creating a batch from it. So uh, let me give you a, an example. So 
I called my, um, so you are basically, you are defining a task. This task is then um, taken by worker and he share results with you. For example, uh, people want to use it uh, because they need to, you have to fill a hundred surveys. So you are just uh, doing to fill the survey uh, or draw something. There's even a book which, were, which was uh, uh, published and the, the task was uh, draw a cat and write a story about the cat. So people were doing it and the guy, were, the, the guy published a book. So um, regarding my task, it was I wanted to verify if I can um, if I can use an army of people to verify the content of uh, the, the content the, to verify the, those interesting files. Okay. To, to give you an uh, idea of it, here for example, um, I use yeah in this bucket, I put almost five gigabytes of various files uh, which are anonymized or at least they should be. Um, and they are in various uh, archives like TGZ, zip, some of them are uh, CQL files, some t TXT file, etc. So a lot of various file types. Okay. And using the uh, mechanical Turk, uh, you can, I just ask those army of people that, hey, uh, take a look on the on my bucket and analyze if you can find any uh, sensitive data and then just send me send me a mail back um, I gave a reward for doing it like 20 20 dollars I don't know if it is uh, if it is too much to too little but I found a, a person who made me for, for those twenty dollars, um, then I gave them the the idea how I want the report look like. So just just give, for example, uh, your your goal is to find all potentially sensitive information in below list of files. Mm. Uh, so I created the list of files. I published. Uh, I make public the uh, public this bucket. And people had uh, have to uh, download it and then search. And after, um, I think after six hours, I got a mail. Uh, and again, I have to uh, show results using the uh, picture because because of sensitive data. Um, so um, he he uh, he simply unpacked the, uh, any any file and then. Um, and then was uh, that oh this uh, this file contains no sensitive data. Uh, uh, files include, uh, for example, reset DB uh, contains AWS access key, which is true. Um, other files like, for example, the uh, license keys. Um, so something that I didn't think about. Um, but yeah, the, the human eye can you know can uh, quickly detect that yes, this this is the, the license. Uh, those are license keys because they they are described properly. Uh, however, the, analyzing the the results, um, they didn't find a lot of uh, all of the sensitive files. So. I don't think that this is a good idea. First of all, of, uh, obviously there is a problem that uh, if there's any leak, then uh, this person already, you know, uh, they they know it, the secret, so it's already <laughs> too late. Um, that's the, the first first problem. But secondly, even if you hire your uh, employee to um, to to make such tasks. I don't think it's a good idea because uh, people just want to quickly uh, just finish finish the, the task. So my second um, second idea was mm -hmm. using Amazon Macy. 
do you know this service? No. Well, I've heard of the service, but never, never played with it. Yeah. So, the service is called like a machine learning powered security service. So to discover, classify, and protect sensitive data. So it sounds like AI for finding secrets. Mm. So something perfectly for me, right? Yeah, sounds <laughs> exactly what, like what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, so I started the service. Actually, you can run it only in these two regions. So uh, North Virginia and Oregon. Um, so I had to move the uh, the content of the bucket to the, uh, to the to the bucket in North Virginia. Okay. And then you can uh, upload. Uh, you you can uh, you can plug the Macy uh, to analyze uh, content of this bucket. So. Um, here you can see that oh you, you can specify the um, how Risk level exactly um, and as you can see there are six high risks. You can see that all the content of this data uh, was uh, somehow categorized, uh, and also you can see that there are uh, there is the uh, AWS secret, A AWS access key, uh, plain text private key. So it was pretty, pretty good. Could you go back a second to the risk um, that you chose? Did they define uh, what is one, two, or three? Or um, actually, uh, actually, uh, it's uh, I, I don't I don't see such uh, that it, it is defined somewhere. Okay, uh, you do, There is no such option to specify. What means free? Uh, so it's categorized only based on the Macy algorithm. Got it. Um, yeah. So uh, you can uh, then uh, let's analyze the files. Uh, oh, to, to, to. S3 objects. Yes only the critical ones and you can see that for example in a, a folder raw bucket scanner py yeah the, there's there's some um, there's some sensitive data so what was the most uh, surprising for me that actually those aws macy are searching the files using the regular expressions. So I really thought that uh, a machine uh, learning powered security service mm -hmm. means something more than just regular expressions. And my conclusions are that uh, Macy really used the machine learning, but only for classifying data. And for finding secrets, obviously, uh, it uh, it uses only regular expressions. Okay. Uh, so for security, I really think it's uh, it's too too low. Um, it's it's too too little. And uh, for example, when I when you don't specify the name uh, of the variable, then Macy will not detect it as a secret. Hmm. So. The results were very, very surprising for me, uh, and that was the reason why I create my own tool. Uh, and my own tool is called the Dumpster Diver. Ooh. And uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it has even the ASCII art. <laughs> um, I and like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's colorful. Uh, yeah, so. Basically, it uses the Shannon entropy. I don't want to go into the details. What is Shannon entropy? What is the formula? How to count it? Mm -hmm. But to give you just just an idea um, how to uh, how to uh, use it, how you can count it. Uh, so here I have uh, a file called test data. Uh, and there are um, three strings. 
uh, which lo uh, the last one is uh, example of secret of se secret key. Here is just just a string, and this is uh, some hash. And when you use uh, and uh, in the dumpster diver, there is a, a separate script uh, just to count the entropy of string. If you want to, uh, if if you are curious. So, for example, uh, if you take the the hash and you want to count the the entropy per character in this string, then it it gives you the uh, answer, it's uh, 3.57. Uh, this actually, it should, the units should be the nuts because the natural logarithms are used there. Uh, but anyway, it's not, it's not important now, uh, but if you take the string which contains only letters, uh, you you can see that free there there is also the three dot eighty one so the 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 results are quite uh, similar right but if you take the really random string like this then you can see that there is there is a big difference uh, in the results uh, so using this entropy I'm verifying every single string in the in the file and analyzing it if it is a potential secret or not and this is uh, what mm, what mainly dumpster diver is doing so let me show you you see that the help is pretty pretty big um, the only required argument is the p argument and specifying the local path to the folder. Uh, all the others are just the options. So, for example, the uh, AWS secret key has the length of 40 bytes. So, you can specify if you are interested only in searching the AWS secret keys, you can specify the minimum key uh, at 40 bytes so uh, the by default it is searching any file long uh, any string longer than 20 bytes okay uh, you can also uh, look for passwords because the entropy for passwords is not good to search it's not effective so I'm simply using the password meter library which is verifying the strength of the passwords um, so that's the that. So let's see um, how how it works in uh, in the same uh, task what uh, I use in uh, Mechanical Turk and Macy. So I put all the files in uh, all the same the content of the bucket uh, to the f uh, test folder, and you can see that here are all the uh, all the the same files which I use for. Uh, which I was scanning using the Amazon Macy. If you go, uh, yeah. So let's try to run against uh, the same uh, files. So it's like five gigabytes of various files which are com uh, compressed uh, and test. So let's see. Mm. So, uh, regarding time, uh, analyzing five gigabytes of uh, using the mechanical Turk was like um, six hours, mm -hmm. and uh, for Macy it was like 40, uh, 40 minutes, and for dumpster diver it's like a few seconds, as <laughs> you could see. Okay. So. Here are the, the results. So found high entropy, and here is some some uh, even two of them. So it's in the folder test raw mail. So if we go uh, to the to this, so first the folder raw and mail. Now, if you open it uh, in the correct program. Uh, so yeah, here's some some email, and in the email, you can see that here are actually 
access key and the secret. The secret which was found by the dumpster diver, right? Yes. However, Macy didn't find didn't find the this one because there's no you know AWS secret equals this. Um, so, uh, but if you see, there are two the same links. The reason of that is that because when you open it in the um, in the text program like Sublime, Sublime, I don't know, uh, then you will see that actually there are two. Uh, the, in this this string uh, there are two such strings because. Uh, you you are seeing it only uh, once when you are opening in the uh, in the mail program, but in the text file you you can see that in the uh, reply there is also uh, the same string. Okay, um, if you uh, let let's go uh, further, uh, the other strings also found in this. Uh, mail uh, was because uh, there is the it's it's the part of signature so this is like this is why it is so uh, from the test perspective it's false positive however uh, yeah it's better to have false positives than false negatives right um, so uh, in the in the raw files, of course, there there wasn't there wasn't problems uh, with finding the same. Uh, the the Macy also didn't didn't uh, um, uh, dealt with uh, finding the this. So, it, a funny thing because Macy detects this secret, but as you can see, I put also the Azure shared key. And uh, it wasn't detected as a, as a something sensitive <laughs> by Macy, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, it also so this is the like it is finding the uh, potential secrets in the um, in the raw files in the text files, but it can also, uh, as you can see. It's ex uh, when you, when something is in extracted files, that means that it's the backup karka block WordPress uh, WP includes, and there's this file. So let's uh, so we will we'll scan it in a moment. However, as you can see, there there are really a lot of findings. Yeah. So to lower it. You can uh, uh, wait. Here. Uh, to lower it, you can use uh, the mm, minimum key size. So, in this uh, example, is the min key, and because we are searching only the AWS key, um, then we can s limit it to just 40, uh, 40 bytes. Okay. Uh, min key 40 and that should be much less results let's see huh. I think it's cool. uh, oh still uh, s uh, still many but uh, I should I should limit the maximum size actually sorry uh, so the min key is 40 and max key will be also 40. Yeah, because uh, the, the AWS secret always are in the size of 40 bytes. So now I I think that there are yeah, much less results as you can see. Um, so so the tool is uh, rather for uh, your uh, you need to customize your search. Your search, yeah. Um, and yeah, let's take a look uh, like 
for example, backup car car. Uh, yeah, if you unpack it and then WordPress, uh, yeah, a blog, sorry, blog WordPress and WP includes certificates. Um, so yeah, and you can see that there, there, there. It was it was found uh, the certificate there. Uh, so it it generally it unpacks any compressed archive uh, as well as any raw file, and it's it's analyzing the um, the entropy of those files, and also it uh, gives you some other options for example like if there are a lot of um, false positives you can exclude files which um, contain something uh, you can uh, uh, which which uh, which are named like this you can uh, specify the the expressions that if this expression is found in file then uh, skip analyzing this file um, also, you can uh, search for passwords. So, if the password is complex, so it's nine, that means that this this password has all uh, is follow is following the strong password policy. So, um, basically, it is, it is um, it is all, um, and. Um, I think that it is really helpful for all the administrators who is uh, ma managing with uh, with files with secrets. They don't know what is stored by their uh, coworkers, yeah. um, and they they want to um, simply um, you know handle manage the, the secrets. So they can do scans using the dumpster diver. Uh, you can put dumpster diver in the um, uh, serverless um, function. So any new object that appear on your uh, storage, cloud storage, then it will be analyzed by, by the dumpster diver. And if, for example, some grep word or the entropy is found, then such, such file is rejected to, to, to be stored. Okay. So it's good for testers. Uh, it's good for administrators. So let me know what you let me know what you think about it, and if you like uh, to just give it a shot and try the tool. Fantastic. I have a question in the chat. It's okay. uh, from Absic Jenner saying, "Which tool would you recommend to use to search for a specific file name in the AWS buckets discovered by Bucket Scanner?" Um, I don't. Uh, uh, can you can you repeat the the question because yeah. I don't I don't get a point. Yeah, I'll start again. It says, which tool would you recommend to use to search for a specific file name in the mm -hmm. AWS buckets discovered by bus a bucket scanner? Yeah. So basically, the bucket scanner is not only uh, finding that that there is a public bucket. But also, let me show you. Uh, it f it goes through the uh, through the files inside of it. So you can specify, for example, let's make um, uh, let's give the regular uh, the regular expression that you are finding uh, a file containing um, the word uh, backup. Uh, for example, it's I think it's yeah like oh for example here's the regular exp ready to use ready uh, regular expression and now this bucket scanner will search for uh, uh, will analyze all the files of the bucket which is specified here and will uh, give you in the output only files containing the extension db or CQL. So if I run it, 
there is the test DB in uh, in Rzebski bucket. So uh, you you can you can see that it is collectible the test DB file. Mm. And uh, also that uh, because the, 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 this, this bucket doesn't exist, it, it just gives you the um, information that it was tested, but uh, it wasn't found. However, uh, using, using the uh, regular expression, you can specify the name of the file, which is interesting for you. So uh, like the extension uh, file, which contains uh, some uh, uh, the name which contains and uh, one more thing that you can specify also the uh, size of the file, the maximum, the minimum, um, and and regular expression of the name of the of the file, and basically yeah. So which two I'm recommending? Uh, bucket scanner. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, with the configuration, you can do that. Whew, that was a lot of information, uh, a lot of great information with a, a nice demo from Pavel. Thank you, Pavel. Uh, so just before you left us, I asked Pavel to go over all the tools or the main tools that he, he went through during his demo, just as a quick review. So you'll see he'll go through the mass tool, which is an OWASP free tool. Um, he also mentioned the bucket stream. He mentions the Wayback Machine, Enum Wayback, and then um, the bucket scanner. That's his own tool that he created. And finally, he concludes with the dumpster diver. So let's go. Let's review for a few minutes and then conclude the show. Amos right. is simply um, asking various um, various third parties to enumerate subdomains. So for example, if you are the bug bounty hunter, uh, very often you are, I don't know, you are getting a, a website facebook.com, so you are searching for any subdomain of Facebook. So for example, like uh, m.facebook.com. Uh, and for such enumerating subdomains, AMAS is really awesome tool. Perfect. Uh, the next what is, one was the next one is bucket stream, stream. and uh, you are using it to find public buckets and also get to know uh, the permission uh, to this bucket. So, uh, for example, you are searching for the free storage uh, on someone else's bucket. Of course, it's not ethical; it's just it's just a joke. But uh, you can just run the bucket stream, and if you get information here that yeah, found the bucket, and all the people has right access, then you have the uh, you have the free storage that will be paid by the other guy. Perfect. Next, you um, spoke about archive.org. Yeah, archive.org. So you can uh, access archive.org. From the from your browser. However, uh, when you are doing research, let's be honest, it is uh, super uh, ineffective. So much better is um, the Enum Wayback in the MSF console. Uh, so in it's one of the module of Metasploit, and when you uh, when you just type the um, the um, search enum wayback then it will find you this this module to um, to ask about any uh, domain um, yeah so that's really really handy tool and you can find using it really really interesting stuff Another one is the bucket scanner. Uh, it is my tool. Uh, there are a lot of other tools uh, for uh, finding the public buckets, but this one is special because it allows you for specifying the access keys, the AWS access keys. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't see 
um, any other tool which is giving such option and also it verifies the write permissions it allows you for specifying the regular expressions as well as you can filter the output using the minimum and maximum size because it's really at the very beginning you are super happy that you found a lot of files but later you will see that uh, the problem is not a the problem is that you have to analyze those a lot of files and it is really problematic okay and the last one is my dumpster diver uh, which is using uh, the, the Shannon Entropy to analyze your local file. So you are spe specifying a path to the local folder and um, it looks for potential keys. Um, it also can search even in the Git log. Uh, so even if you have the local GitHub repository, it will also analyze all the git logs. So any commits, uh, it is also very popular that people are mm, leaking the keys uh, because of git logs. So uh, for example, I'm doing one commit that uh, where I'm putting my access keys and then I'm realizing it. So I'm making another commit to remove those keys. However, these uh, commits, the changes in commits are available in the git logs. So dumpster diver will search also also uh, of them. And also you can you can specify any um, uh, any uh, grep words. So for example, you are searching the files which contain uh, some magic word, like for example, in different language. So in my sure. country, some 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 people are you know you are using Polish in their code, <laughs> um, yeah. So fair enough. And you um, you wrote an article uh, in on your Medium blog about dumpster diver, right? right. So okay. if you if you think that it was too chaotic, what I was saying, you can see on my blog uh, where. I was trying to, to be more detailed. Uh, you can play with it, analyze with it. You will, and if you still have any questions, just feel free to contact me. You can find me on Twitter. You can drop me a mail. Um, Super. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you very much, Pavel. That was really, really useful, uh, eye-opening. <laughs> um, I have all those links. Thank you for sending them to me. Um, as maybe you know, um, in the chat the people watching, we put the video, we edit it a bit and um, send it on YouTube, on the DevSlop channel, where in the show notes, you will get the links to everything that... Uh, Pavel uh, spoke about. So don't worry about that. I really recommend for you to go see his blog because he's really active on not only the tools that he showed us today, but a bunch of other tools. So if you're interested interested in cloud security, definitely follow him. He's uh, he's on top of all of it. So every time mm -hmm. I follow him on Twitter as well. Um, so every time he talks about something, I look it up because uh, he's always, like I said, on top of everything new. So that's fantastic. He's a great resource <laughs> to look at. Thank, Thank you very much. If I can add just one more thing, Go ahead. Uh, a little, I created the Capture the Flag game, um, which is available. Also, I will share all the links to you, Nancy. Okay. And uh, here's the plot of the story. Uh, the story is uh, about finding some uh, uh, buckets, keys, etc. I prepare some, um, you know, some some uh, surprises for you. If you have any problem uh, with solving this, uh, also you will see the walkthrough on my uh, on my blog. I don't want to share it now because don't want to um, spoil uh, <laughs> the play for you. But yeah, that's awesome. Uh, go ahead and yeah, try the tools. Uh, try the tools you learned today. Um, give it a shot and hope you will learn something and will enjoy it. 
Hey, that's it for the show today. Thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Uh, the whole Death Slop team, the OWASP Death Slop team, would like to thank Pavel for being here today. Thank you for all the information that you provided us and our audience. Uh, so please, everyone, uh, follow Pavel on his Twitter um, handle that you can see on the screen and also his medium blog where he has a bunch of really incredible articles about cloud security and everything else he's passionate about so again i hope you enjoyed the show and see you next time